untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to my first starter deck upgrade guide for the standard 2023 season. You may have noticed the new starter deck tab in the deck builder, which contains 15 decks whose contents are fully available to everyone. And you can easily edit these decks by cloning them here with a clone button, which will add it to your personal decks. And then now it becomes much easier to edit the deck and make any changes. And step one when editing these decks is to change the format because by default it is set to alchemy and you want to change it to standard so you don't have to face all those powerful alchemy cards. This is On the Hunt, a red-green werewolf tribal deck which features a ton of cards with a daybound and nightbound mechanic. Not going to go into too much detail about that here, but it is important and it informs our deck building decisions since we want plenty of ways to easily switch it to nighttime since all the werewolves in our deck will benefit from it. So step one is to go with a slightly more budget-friendly upgrade, which will cost one common wild card, nine uncommons, five rares and one mythic rare wild card. And I'll go over it step by step here, starting from the original starter deck. At one mana, Snarling Wolf is going to get cut since it's just not quite impactful enough for standard. Then Lunar Frenzy can be powerful, but also a little bit on the expensive side, so that will go. And then instead at one mana, we can add three copies of Play With Fire, which is actually available in one of the other starter decks. So you don't need to use any wild cards for the first three copies of Play With Fire. And then to round out the one mana removal, I'm also going to play one copy of Flame Blast Bolt, which also has the advantage of potentially exiling a creature or planeswalker, even though it cannot go upstairs. But exiling quite relevant when facing cards like Kami of Transients or Tenacious Underdog in standard. And then we also have one copy of Tail Swipe as a one mana fight effect. And if we play it during our main phase, we also get a plus one plus one bonus. Now I'm not playing any copies of Strangle, which can deal three damage at sorcery speed. And part of the reasoning is that having instance allows us to switch it to nighttime by simply passing the turn after having a daybound creature in play. And then we can still play a removal in the opponent's turn and still have the benefit of transforming our werewolves. So that's why I prefer instant speed removal, even though the three damage on Strangle can be beneficial. Then at two mana, taking a look at some of our creatures here, the Hungry Rich Wolf is actually not bad and is one of the last cards I would cut if you don't have other two drops to replace it with, but it will end up going here even in the more budget friendly build. And then some of the other two drops are actually quite powerful. Outland Liberator can deal with artifacts and enchantments. We're going to go up to four copies. Pack Song Pup is also quite good as it can scale over time, picking up additional plus one counters, gaining life when it dies as well. So that will also go up to four copies. And then the Naturalist also great, especially during night time, as it will pump our team, acting as a lord. And then I'm still playing two copies of a Natural Moonrise, since that's an easy way to switch it to nighttime. Now this can be a little bit awkward, since sometimes you play Moonrise and you want to play another card alongside it, maybe one you've drawn with the Moonrise itself, but then if we play a second spell it's going to switch right back to day during the opponent's turn. But just getting that one attack step where all our wolves transform to their nightbound sides can already be worth it. So that's why we keep two Moonrise. Then Moonrager Slash looks like it could be amazing since it can be one mana for three damage at instant speed which solves the problem that Strangle has but it does require it to already be nighttime and if you're facing a one drop from the opponent you don't want to have a Moonrager Slash as an answer you want some cheaper play with fire or flame blast bolt instead so Slash is going to be cut here all three copies are gone but instead we do get to add a pretty powerful three mana burn spell instead namely a Rending Flame. And Rending Flame is great because it's a 3 mana answer to Shieldred, the 5 toughness Phyrexian, which is a nightmare for a lot of aggressive decks to deal with. Rending Flame is a nice 3 mana answer, can also target Planeswalkers to maybe take those out. So we'll be adding 2 copies of a Rending Flame. And then going over the remaining 3 drops, we've got a Reckless Stormseeker, which is one of the better werewolves in our deck. A 2-3 saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, target creature we control gets plus 1 plus 2 and gains haste until end of turn. And then during the night it turns into a 3-4 giving plus 2 plus 0, trample and haste until end of turn. So definitely want to go up to 4 copies of Stormseeker as soon as possible. 
Another amazing 3 mana werewolf is Tovalar, Dire Overlord. This will draw a ton of cards if we can hit the opponent with our wolves or werewolves, and also makes it super easy to switch to nighttime. We just need to control 3 or more wolves and or werewolves during our upkeep, and then it will automatically switch to night without having to jump through the hoops of not casting any spells. And then the Midnight Scourge during nighttime is a 4-4 that can also pump up our werewolves, so that's a nice mana sink so we can easily keep it nighttime without having to cast too many other spells. So Tovalar is legendary, still gonna go up to three copies for now. Eventually I can easily see going up to four copies as well, but we'll start out with three. And then a Wolf Strike, kind of an expensive fight effect. Tail Swipe just kind of does it better at one mana, so we'll cut a Wolf Strike. And then Weaver of Blossoms is not really necessary since we'll be cutting some of the more expensive cards in the deck. There are some powerful 6 mana werewolves, Tovalar's Huntmaster, there's the Caretaker as well, but we're not going for that approach, we're going for a slightly more aggressive build instead, so Weaver of Blossoms is not necessary. And then for now we'll be keeping our one copy of Howling Moon, an enchantment that can give one of our wolves or werewolves plus two plus two until end of turn. And if the opponent casts their second spell each turn, we get to make a 2-2 green wolf creature token, so that can punish the opponent for casting two spells to try and switch it back to daytime. And then at 4 mana we'll still be playing the Partners, despite not being a werewolf, it's still very powerful and has great synergy with now 4 copies of Stormseeker, as Stormseeker can give the Partners 1 additional power, which in turn will give a creature 3 extra plus 1 counters, as well as haste, so that can get out of hand very quickly. Then Child of the Pack isn't bad, since it gives us an activated ability for 4 mana to make a wolf token, that's a way to spend our mana and potentially let it switch to night time since we're not actually casting a spell, and then uh, still make use of all our mana without letting it go to waste. And then the Savage Pack made a 5-5 Trampler, giving our creatures 1 additional power isn't bad either, but I will go down to 2 copies since I want to make room for an extra copy of Arlen, the Pack's Hope, the key Planeswalker in this deck, which also makes it very easy to let it switch to night time, since we'll typically start out with a daybound side, make a pair of 2-2 wolf tokens with a minus 3, and then on the following turn we can plus 1, and then play our creatures at instant speed until our next turn, and also give them an extra plus 1 counter, so now we can easily pass the turn, let it switch to night time since we didn't cast anything, and still play our werewolves during the opponent's turn, in addition to getting extra plus 1 counters, and then during the night our link can turn into a 5-5 indestructible werewolf with trample or potentially generate additional mana. So we'll add a second copy of Arlen and then we'll still keep our one copy of Howl Pack Piper which would be better alongside some of the previously mentioned six mana werewolves as we can potentially cheat them in play with a two mana activated ability, another way to potentially spend our mana and let it switch to night. But the Wild Swung Howler is still very powerful even without those six mana werewolves as it will enter the battlefield and find another creature in the top of our library so that can provide a nice bit of card advantage especially if we keep switching between day and night. And then the Brigand will be cut as one of the weaker 4 drops. And at 5 mana as we mentioned we're gonna cut the Burly Breaker and the Village Watch as well, just because they're a bit too expensive for standard. And then for now the mana base will stay untouched. We do have some tap lands with Racer's Ring and Highlands, but then again we also don't have a ton of 1 drops we need to play on turn 1, so it's fine to play these tapped and then uh, carry on, but we'll be upgrading this in the version 3 of the deck. But for now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a promising hand. Turn two, probably go with Naturalists into Stormseeker on three. Opponent also on a red deck with turn one Kumano, which we can maybe blow up with our Liberator. Wouldn't necessarily be able to put the extra mana to use, but uh, I'll still take it. Turn to Automaton. And then now, I guess if we attack, we could double spell Liberator plus Pack Song Pup, starting with Pup so it picks up a counter. And then we'll wait on Stormseeker until next turn. Now we're not keeping up mana to sacrifice Liberator, which is a drawback of this line. Running Flame to take care of it. Now with the etching out, our creatures get exiled, so the pup also doesn't gain any life. Is important to keep in mind. But that's okay, we'll play Stormseeker. 
and we'll give it self haste, attack with a team, play attack plant, and then next turn we can rending flame the automaton perhaps. Another Kumano. And a Phoenix Chick, that's fine. Gold Hound is acceptable. So 5 mana to kill Automaton next turn. 5 damage is still enough, luckily. And another Stormseeker is an option too. Now, I could also pass a turn to let it switch to Knights, and then Rending Flame in the opponent's turn, although then we give up a pretty healthy attack, which is probably not worth it. So we'll just kill Automaton now. Pay the two, and attack. If we didn't have an extra mana, we could have also attacked, and then with extra mana from Naturalist, we still would have been able to pay the ward. So, if we had one fewer land in play, we still could have killed it. Opponent jumps up, takes 5, down to 5. And another Stormseeker is likely to cross the finish line next turn, but we'll see. At 14 we're not in any immediate danger of dying on the way back. Opponent finds another Phoenix Chick, not very useful when they're behind. So they can attack for 7 total, put us to 7. Not quite enough. Phoenix Chick doesn't block, so is forced to attack. And our opponent seems dead on board, but Stormseeker will make sure that that's the case. And our opponent explodes, awesome. Okay, we're on the play, hand seems promising. Some good two drops, bit of removal. Can play our Highland turn one. And then Naturalist is the creature that is probably best when played early. Opponent is Black-White. Blight Pile, so maybe a Defender's deck should be interesting. So if we Howling Moon we can attack past it. I think that's going to be the plan. Opponent is likely to have quite a few artifacts that we can take out with a Liberator as well, so if we can switch it to Knight. We can put it to good use. Touch the Spirit Realm, can exile one of the two, goes for Naturalist, although once again Liberator can potentially take care of it. So play Liberator, pass, and then next turn we can maybe switch it to Knights by just passing the turn and casting some of our instants. If they try and kill Liberator, we can still sacrifice it at least. So important to leave ourselves with one mana. Opponent lets it switch to Knight. Uh oh. They might be in trouble here. Pump our Trap Breaker attack. And we get to free our Naturalist. Opponent's gonna fake their own death on Blight Pile. Well, we can Rending Flame in response if we'd like. Still get our Naturalist back. And probably fine to play another, even though it's going to switch back today. Still have a Bolt available. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is promising. Turn 2 pup into Stormseeker. And then a Howling Moon to punish double spells from our opponent. Opponent on a red, potentially aggressive deck. Turn to Automaton, so Artifact Aggro. Alright, stick to the plan for now. Might be a game where we leverage Piper for extra card advantage. So ideally we can play it during night, so we get immediate card advantage. They might have removal here, take out our Pack Song Pup. It's going to be a Dragon Spark Reactor first. 
You can also slowly pick up counters as they play more artifacts and a synthesizer. Well, at least if they exile a land or a spell here, they wouldn't be able to really leverage it. Okay, so we'll play a Stormseeker and give itself haste attack, since we're not going to be able to block the automaton profitably. So might as well turn it into a race. And then next turn, Moonrise could switch it to Knights. Also then if we play our pup alongside it, it will switch back to day in the opponent's turn as we've cast two spells. So it's a tricky balance. Opponent's gonna strangle the Stormseeker here, yeah, that's a good one. Three damage. And something else, maybe a Voltage Surge as well. Liberator's excellent, especially if we can get the Tramp Breaker going. So how do we sequence here? I would prefer to play Liberator and have one mana available to sacrifice it if needed. But um, yeah, this turn kind of looks like we just want to double spell. So I guess we'll play Paxong Pup. And then I could move to combat to bait out removal. Then we don't pick up a plus one counter. But then we still have Liberator, which can maybe survive. All right, Voltage Surge on Pup in response makes sense. Gain some life. Now our opponent could use Dragon Spark Reactor to kill Liberator. I think that's acceptable here since we don't have many better options. And then the second Pup will still pick up a counter. Never mind, opponent's got Voltage Surge as their last card. Okay, so now we could be in a bit of trouble. Opponent's ahead on board. And uh, unless it switches to Knights, we're not going to make a ton of progress. All right, it does switch to Knight as our opponent's out of plays. So this can find another Wolf while growing the Pack Song Pup. And switching between day and night while we have the uh, Piper in play is also beneficial. So now we don't mind as much. And uh, Liberator versus Tovalar. It's actually close. Liberator's cheaper, so we can maybe play it alongside our other spells more easily. I think we do go for a Liberator here. And attack for two. Opponent on taps. Last turn they could have sacrificed the synthesizer, but they decided not to. Once again, they pass a turn. All right, let's play a liberator. See if there's a response. And then the question is whether we want to play another spell. But yeah, opponent scoops it up since the trap breaker is just so powerful against them. And if they try and take it out, we can still at least sacrifice it to get some value. Now that we got to see version 2 in action, it's time to upgrade this deck all the way. So if you've been playing the deck and you enjoy it, this is how I would upgrade it even further. So step 1 is to go up to 4 copies of Play With Fire, ditch the Flame Blast Bolt since going face can actually be quite relevant, and then we'll also add a second copy of Tailswipe just to give us a tad more removal. And then at 1 mana there's another powerful wolf we could be playing just to make the deck a little bit more aggressive and that's Ascendant Pack Leader, a 2-1 that can pick up plus 1 counters if we play a 4-drop later in the game. So that can be quite nice as well to start out our curve with, especially when facing counterspell heavy decks. It's nice to start out our curve with a nice 1-drop. Then at 2 mana we're going to keep all the creatures as is, but I will be cutting the Unnatural Moonrise, which as I've mentioned can be pretty awkward if you want to cast another spell alongside it, and we will be introducing more ways to easily switch it to Knight by adding a fourth copy of Tovalar, that's step 1. We will cut the Howling Moon, which is not incredibly impactful, and then at 4 mana we can go up to 4 copies of Arlen, which thanks to the plus 1 on the Daybound side also makes it easy to switch it to Knight, and then Child of the Pack can go. And then the Howl Pack Piper will also be cut. And now that we have a lower curve, it's also easier to cut some of the lands. So definitely get rid of all the tap lands first. 
and then we can upgrade the mana base by going up to four copies of Rockfall Veil, vale, and then Dominare United introduce another untapped land, Carpluzen Forest, and the untapped lands on turn one are now even more important that we introduced the Ascendant Pack Leader, which we definitely want to play right away on turn one. So having the forest come into play untapped, even though it costs us a bit of life, is still totally worth it. And then we'll go down to seven mountains and eight forests since we need slightly more green, especially in the early game. So we're down to 23 lands now, but the curve is also lower and we have Tovalar times four, which is likely to draw some more cards and make it easier to hit our land drops. So yeah, this is the fully upgraded deck. Let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a promising start. Turn one, pack leader, turn two, pack song pup. Facing Delver, so maybe a mono blue counterspell deck. So having these early creatures is important to apply some pressure. Does Delver transform? Not quite. So we'll play Pack Song Pup. Doesn't matter which lands we use just yet. And then Pup can maybe pick up a counter right away. Now we really want to introduce a werewolf to the battlefield so we get the day and night cycle started so we can punish the opponent for passing and letting it switch to night. Now that they countered, do we offer the trade? I think so. Opponent's not necessarily gonna accept the trade and I'm fine trading one for two if that's the case. Three mana for Hot Agen. we've got the answer at the ready. Unless we want to play a Stormseeker first. That's a little risky. Next turn we can double spell pretty efficiently. Don't want to let the opponent untap with Hot Gen, so we'll just kill it now. Attack for two. And hope they don't have another one. Delver still staying a creature, so they likely drew lands or creatures. And uh, yeah, can play Pack Leader plus Stormseeker. That seems fine. And then next turn, potentially double spell again. So kick things off with Pack Leader in case they feel inclined to counter this. They don't. And Stormseeker, I'm sure, is going to get countered, but might as well give it a shot. Scorn counters for two mana. Opponent drops to 14. And now Delver finally transforms, revealing Impulse, which they're going to fire off right away. Currently four cards in Graveyard, three Instants and Sorceries, but they had land into another Hot Gin. That's too bad. But we can double spell. Now the Hot Gin still halting any of our attacks, but at least we get the Day and Night Cycle started. And uh, yeah, no attacks here. Next turn the Paxong Pup can attack. Hoping for a 4 drop to trigger double pack leader. And Arlen's pretty good too during nights. Can be a 5-5 five, five indestructible creature, so we'll run that out. And now Slasher can also pump something with 2 extra power. So yeah, the opponent passing the turn there, despite them having a counterspell. Still playing to our advantage. And uh, I think we'll pump the pack leader as opposed to the pack song pup to hit for a little bit more. So we're at 12, two turn clock for the opponents, but they're at nine, so they can't really afford to attack with both. Now consider it's likely to switch it back to daytime if they can find another cantrip. Which they did, and it's in fact another Hoddy Gin. They're just gonna play it safe, attack with a one Gin. And uh, yeah, now it's not looking so good for us. Can play Naturalist Attack. And uh, opponent's got one good block. Do we still have enough here? I think we're gonna be one damage short. They can chump the pack song pup. Trade. They should probably switch those blocks around. But uh, alright, I guess that did it. Pretty sure 
our opponent could have survived here since we had a two powered storm seeker that they could have let through and gone to one and then if they blocked in such a way to keep one of their two creatures alive which i think they would have been able to had they chumped delver on the four four and then uh Hardigen can block pretty much any other three-powered creature and her opponent survives, but I guess Combat Math is not part of Mono Blue's repertoire. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Pack Leader, turn two, if we don't draw another land, can play another Pack Leader, since this will come into play tapped at the moment. But then the Pack Song Pup will start growing, so we'll be off to an aggressive start at least. And against the turn one islands, I like turn one pack leader. Still missing some removal in case Hadi Jin shows up. For now, could play a naturalist as well. Yeah, I guess they're less likely to have a counter spell available now than next turn. And if we get a day and night cycle started, we can punish future counter spells. So we'll attack for two, play Naturalists, and then next turn we can double spell as well. Alright, that resolves. Opponent blue-white, alright, that changes things. And not a control deck, but a Virtuoso deck. So they probably have a way to protect it here, and we don't have any instant speed removal. So that could be a problem. I think the plan is play a pup. Attack with Naturalists. Make a mana play another Naturalist. But they likely have a trick to uh, turn this into a bad attack. Alright, they're gonna march. Get rid of the Naturalist so we don't get to mana. And still connive onto the Virtuoso. A bit risky if we had one mana removal, but sadly we don't. And there's already Homestead Courage waiting in the graveyard. So yeah, this is going to be tough. I guess we do get to attack for two now. Partners can help us uh, grow the team. But Virtuoso hits incredibly hard, and Homestead Courage gives Vigilance, so we can't attack past it. So need to find our Rending Flame to maybe kill it still, if they haven't found more protection spells in the meantime. For now, play Partners. And we'll grow both pack leaders as well. Pup grows and maybe grow naturalist too. Still don't have any great attacks. And maybe we'll grow pack leader here. And then do we risk attacking with a 5-4 pack leader? Might be sending it into the meat grinder here. I think we'll wait and maybe try and go wide next turn. So the opponent doesn't have as much momentum as if we attack, they get to grow Virtuoso and eat a pack leader. Slip out the back to phase it out, give it some more counters. So they are all in on Virtuoso. Discarding a Storm Chaser Drake as well. And switches to Knight, so that's what we like to see. And then we can double spell Naturalist Storm Seeker, even if it means switching back to Day next turn. We still get a massive attack in here. With Slasher pumping Partners, Partners pumping Slasher in return. And another Lord as well. So what if we attack with all? They can block one creature, still take a million. That seems good. Now they can kill the Lord with first strike damage. It looks like they have another march instead. All right, that's uh, pretty bad, I guess. They can eat pack leader for free now. Still taking seven and uh, we're not necessarily dead on the way back. So we get another crack at it next turn. So we'll see. 
Command Research. Virtuoso can grow up to 6-6 six, six if they discard an online card. Stays a 5-5, five, five, but does draw 2. And a shore up. If they drew a non-land card, kills us, and they did. Wow, super close game here. But uh, yeah, some well-timed marches to save the day. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. We'll need a land or two here. But turn one, play with fire. Turn two, pup. Turn three, Tovalar. If all goes according to plan. And a Phoenix Chick could be a good target for play with fire. And now we don't have to take one extra damage. We'll wait and see what else the opponent plays first. If they just move to combat, I probably take one from Phoenix Chick, since there's more threatening two drops. Kumano. Alright, so. That's also quite scary. Now it's probably worth it to still kill the Phoenix Chick to use my mana, since I'll be tapping out in the foreseeable future. Play our pup. Opponent likely holding their own play with fire. So, yeah, definitely advantage opponent here early on, being on the play with some efficient one mana spells. Hopefully we can play Arlen on curve to kind of stabilize by making some wolf tokens. Opponent's missing a play for now. Could see Lightning Strike take care of Tovalar. And yeah, there it is. That's okay. As we have a backup. And then really hoping for an untapped land here. Goro Goro can give itself haste. Hit us for 4 total. Still doesn't line up all that well against our wolf tokens or Tovalar if it survives. And our opponent's out of action. Not our Arlen, so go with Tovalar. And that might stabilize us. Voltaic Visionary. They can give it haste with Goro Goro. But they're just going to pass it back. Stormseeker. Okay, so I think I'm just going to pass a turn to switch it to nighttime, and then we can use removal on the opponent's turn. Don't think we can really attack since they can easily double block or trade. So now we've got a 4 4 back on defense. Doesn't die to Lightning Strike. Opponent's going to use Visionary. Yeah, that's fine. Wait and see what they exile, just a land. So Visionary transforms, and our opponent gets to scry with a Grotto, so kind of a freebie in a mono red deck that doesn't need all its lands to make red mana. Another Kumano. So it will still not switch back to Daytime, since they only cast the one actual spell. And we'll take out Berserker. And then now Stormseeker with haste looks a lot better as a slasher. Can leave Tovalor back on defense. And hopefully draw lands. Red mana for play with fire, green for tail swipe. Both acceptable. And this is where the game's gonna turn around very quickly. Opponent's going to double block, still get to trample for one and draw. And now the opponent's board state is disintegrating. And we can start attacking with Tovalar as well. Perfect. So we can still play with fire if needed. Alright, adversary is not bad actually. Enters with a counter so it doesn't die to play with fire, and they can pay extra mana to get back a lightning strike. So probably have to trade here. 
after taking three, since it's also going to switch back to daytime. So Tovalor's not that amazing anymore. But then we still have double Arlen. So we're still pretty far ahead, but uh, yeah, some good top decks could still swing the game back around. Play Arlen, make wolf tokens, and then next turn we can play Naturalist at instant speed in the opponent's turn, which is a great way to switch it to nighttime. And then both our cards are instants, so we can play those too. And playing two spells in the opponent's turn does not switch it back to daytime. Phase Breaker is not going to change that. And fine to trade. Alright, so we'll plus Arlen, and then uh, can maybe set up an ambush just by playing Naturalist and double blocking Phase Breaker. Phoenix Chick, we can take out. Pretty good combo with a Phase Breaker as an evasive creature that can make more treasure. But we can take it out with a Play with Fire here. So we'll see if the Phase Breaker attacks. Probably doesn't. Okay, so we'll. Uh, Play with fire, Phoenix Chick, Flash and Naturalist, and we can Tail Swipe too for good measure. And then on tap, can uh, turn Arlen into a werewolf, play a pack leader attack, and that's pretty much game over. Alright, so we got to see our red-green werewolf decks in action, all the way from the budget build to the fully unlocked build with all the bells and whistles attached. But for now, let me know in the comments which deck you would like to see upgraded next, and if this video performs well enough, I'll make sure to get to it. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.